My name is Janie McShann. I'm the daughter of jazz pianist Jay McShann. My father was born in Muskogee, Oklahoma, January 12, 1916, and later moved to Kansas City in 1937. His contribution to jazz in Kansas City was huge. My fondest memory of him growing up was actually eating barbecue every Friday and Saturday night after his gigs. My father's legacy is known worldwide and we are so glad to be able to share his story with you. Did you have blues records in the house when you were growing up? First blues I ever heard was in was it Bessie and James P. did that Backwater Blues? Backwater Blues. That was first. You see, my dad worked at a furniture store. And uh, they sold uh, uh, the old Victrolas and all that stuff there. And records. So, one day he brought a record in. And, you know, I knew they, you know, they threw, when they threw them away, you know. I knew they'd be in the truck, you know. Mm -hmm. So I always go out in the truck and look myself at this record. So I picked it up and brought it in there and put it on there and played it. It was James P. Johnson and I guess Mamie Smith or Bessie, whichever one it was. And by gosh, man, I, man that knocked me out. I knew right then I liked the blues. <laughs> so you see, what would happen? Well, they didn't want me playing the, playing the blues records in the house. And then if I tried to play the blues in the house, you know, well, you know, I had to stop. They had to stop, so they wouldn't let me play nothing but church songs. But the only time I got a chance to play anything different is when my grandmother would come over. She said, play me some of that other kind of stuff. And I, <laughs> he said, I'd go on and play it. Hey, I'd do that to defy my parents. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kids like that, you know. Yeah. So grandma told me I'd play it, and I'm gonna go on and play it. And I went on, I'd go on and play it. Well, man, be reading the paper. As rude, he don't do nothing but just lower the paper and look around. But he didn't lower the paper. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, I got by with this. Hey, my name is Everett Freeman. I'm glad to be a part of the Jay McShann birthday celebration. Back in 1992, I was able to be on stage with him and be honored in the Hallmark African American celebration of jazz. Thank you very much. It's good to be here.
Jay, what was the first band that uh, that you were a part of? What is a family band called the Gray Brothers? Old Man Gray used to be in the school system, and he did, used to be old time band, you know, band school band man. And he had two boys and two or three girls, and all of them played something. So when Christmas time would come around, uh, you know, holidays, things, and he got jobs to play, they'd come get me to play the piano with him. And then as uh, I left them, I played, went, played with Al Dennis' band. Al Dennis, old timer there in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He had about oh, 12, 14 piece band, you know. And uh, Al Dennis, you know, make these little towns right around right close to Tulsa. So that was his second big, his second group, big band I'd worked with. Big band. Well, that, that was the first big band I'd worked with. And then I went out west with Eddie Hill's band. See, Eddie Hill and his Bostonians. Nobody in there from Boston but Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first band that you put together? Was that in Kansas City? First band I put together was in Kansas City. That was a small group that I put together. I went to work out in the plaza at Martin's. Martin's 210. What year would that be about? Uh... Well, that had to be... 1937. Charlie Parker was uh, was a member of your band in the late 30s. Um, did he join around uh, around that time? Was that one of your first? Well, bands? when I first he went he went he went to work with the first group to, I took out there. Yeah. Uh, how old was Charlie Parker when he started playing with you? Well, he couldn't have been no more. Uh, maybe he might have been in his teens or might have been 20, somewhere right around then. Was he a great player back then? Yeah, he had it. He had it together. That's why. I, that, that, that's that's why I, you know I got him. You know, cause I thought he sounded good. Were you there when he got his nickname Bird? Well, actually, when he actually really got it, got it officially, was the time that we were going to Lincoln, Nebraska, to play. You know, they had football game that day. You know, and they won the game. You know, and all that stuff. You know. You know how they played the games in those days, and they have the dance afterward. We went up there to play one of those dances. And you know, like when you go along the highway, you're going through the, out in this country, the chickens are really running right alongside the highway with the <laughs> cars sometimes. And so these chickens was way down there on the, you really know, down there close to where the cars was. And they hit this chicken, so birds say, hey man, you hit them on them Chicken's back there. He says, stop, stop the car. Slow down. Back up and go get that bird. So the guy did. He stopped the car and backed up and went all the way back. And got, bird got out and got, grabbed the chicken <laughs> and took the chicken into Lincoln. <laughs> and was, those days, we had to get uh, rooms at uh, private families, you know. So Bird went over to Miss Joseph's. As soon as he got that, Miss Joseph, he asked me, Miss Joseph, would you fix this bird? We hit this bird. Yard bird coming down. She said, "Yeah, I'll fix it for you." So she did. She fixed it, and he got a room at her, at her place, you know. And so she fixed it. No bird wouldn't let nobody have none of his chicken. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "No, if I hadn't made y'all stop and pick it up, he said we wouldn't have. Had, wouldn't have been no chicken at all." He said, "I'ma eat all this bird myself." <laughs> Charlie Parker is um, credited with with uh, co-writing. Two songs with you that uh, that are two of your most famous songs. Uh, he co-wrote Hootie Blues and Jump in the Blues with you. Mm -hmm. How did those songs come about? Do you remember? How did you write those songs with Charlie Parker? Well, what we did when he said they said a lot of riffs. We used to set a lot of riffs, and then well, so when he said when so when he set that riff, so I said, look, man. I said, listen. I said, tell you what we do. I said, we want to finish that. Let's finish that out and just make a whole number out of that. So every time, you know, when I, you know, when we'd be playing something, not him, set that riff. So then we did. We was in New Orleans. We was playing New Orleans. So I called a rehearsal and we got that together and set that up. And then we got together and during the same time we were doing that, we did the Hootie Blues, you know. We got, got Hootie Blues together. And uh, that's how that happened. Yeah, we did that in New Orleans, Louisiana. And who wrote the lyrics? Walter Brown. Yeah. 
your first big hit was uh, Confessing the Blues. Uh, That's right. Did that make a big difference to you as a band leader to uh, to have a hit like that? No, no, it never made made any difference. Fact about it, when we went down that record, see, we had a lot of this other stuff we had in our mind to record, to record, you know. Very sweet. We called. We didn't call it that then. We called it "What Price Love." We had that. And we had swimmatism and you know stuff like that. That's what we wanted to record. But the cat kept telling us. He says, "Man, this is this yo." He says, "Y'all, I can't use that." He says, "He said I like it. He said I like it myself." He said, "But he says it's too early for that." He kept telling us. He says, "It's too early." So he says, "I'll tell you what." He says. Uh, don't you ever do any blues or boogies? He would say, yeah. He said, do me a blues. So we just went right into confessing the blues. But he was pretty slick. He, he was right on the controls. And he hit the controls. And, and, and we just went right straight through it and played it. And then it was a take. It, it was a take. <laughs> so when we saw him smiling, <laughs> you know, he was smiling. <laughs> And the longer we played it, he just gives him always smile. So, so he says, well, he says, I tell you what, he says, uh, uh, you do a boogie boogie, yeah. So we did Vine Street boogie. We did that, and that was a take. So then he says, I tell you what, do me a, another blues, and I think that's when we did what was it, Hootie, Hootie blues, I either confess it. We did that, and uh, he said, do that, and I'll take one of them other tunes. Pick out one of them other tunes that you want to do. So we picked out Swing With Tism. And uh, so that's what we did. So then... Uh, we didn't know anything. He said, well, I said, tell you, fellas, he says, we got that over with right quick. He said, just, just a very few minutes. He says, we've seen all the afternoon doing all this other stuff. He said, we didn't realize how easy it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> he said, the session's through. We through. Hello. My name is Amy Lewis, and J. Mac Shan is my grandfather. I grew up um, being able to not only go to his performances all throughout Kansas City, but several Sunday afternoons, my family would just go over and hang out um, with him on, um, like after church. Sometimes we'd play, sometimes we would just sit and talk and be in each other's presence, or, you know, we might watch Wheel of Fortune or whatever was on TV. Um, but nonetheless, he was a big influence in my life. Um, I'm currently a music education professor and I taught music for several years. And um, my grandfather was a big influence with me becoming, um, with me becoming a musician. And I am quite grateful uh, to have had him and to have had the relationship that I had with him while he was alive. And um, so happy birthday. I think it's really, really the, the reason a lot of people that like the blues because that they assimilate those sevenths which you use with the blues. They assimilate that with uh, as a blue note. This, you know, telling them that they blew or, or they got the blues, I think. <laughs> yeah, because I've heard that guy, many, many old guy holler about that. Hey, hit that blue note again, man. Oh, wow. You know, Holland, you know, Holland says something. You know. Yeah, see, because, see, they used to request all kind of numbers in Kansas City during that time when I come into Kansas City. That's when I found out that uh, they used to have tunes like uh, called old, mo old money tunes. And see, these cats would come in there and ask for these old funny way out tunes. 
But he's go, he's got a probably a hundred dollar bill or fifty dollar bill in his hand, see? <laughs> I remember one night <laughs> some cat come in. Hey, do you guys know old Black Joe? <laughs> no, I never heard of him. This guy said, man, I've been trying to get these guys to play my song all night. He says, shut down. He says, they don't know it. They, they don't, these guys don't know it? No. So, uh, somebody must have put him here. Please. The next time he come back, he says, <laughs> he says, it's too bad you guys didn't know who Black Joe he had a hundred dollar bill in his hand. One of the cats snatched it out of his hand. He said, hell, why didn't you say old Black Joe? I didn't know that was what you was talking about. <laughs> and grabbed the hundred. <laughs> said, hey, man. He said, well, what about the rest of the guys? Do they know it? He said, hell, yes. Hell, yeah. We, if they don't, we'll get it. They used to raid those uh, joints on uh, 18th and Vine. Oh, yeah. A lot of, lot, lot of times, a lot of joints were... Well, see, well, I tell you, they did more raiding down in southern Kansas, in them little towns down through that way. See, that's the reason that, that that's really what brought me to Kansas City. See, because, see, a lot of cats, we used to go all up through through southern Kansas and play them gig, because these are these towns that, uh, where well, the cats go go to the wet states and get their whiskey and bring them back, then open up their clubs. See. They opened up the clubs. Well, see, that made it pretty good for us. We didn't have to fight the competition in Kansas City, a place like that. We just going in there, and, you know, and, and just play for these guys down in the smaller cities, like all across the southern part of Kansas, you know. But you see, who is what they what they got to be bothered with? They don't know when the old sheriff is gonna decide to close them up. See, he might come down there and hit on them for some more money. He want them a little more payoff. They don't pay off. Well, they ain't like to get closed up that night. See what I mean? <laughs> well, they get closed up and we out of a job. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the thing of it. When they close the club, we out of a job. Yeah. So I, I might ask you, I said, where you going, man? So we ain't got no gig now. You used to might say, well, if you're, maybe your home is in Oklahoma City, you might say, well, I'm going back to Oklahoma City, man. So I told the cat, I said, well, I got an uncle in Omaha. I think I'll go to Omaha. So on the way to Omaha, I got stopped in Kansas City. I stopped in Kansas City because the bus had to lay over about an hour and a half. So I asked the cat where the Reno Club was. He said, that's only two blocks, two, a couple of blocks down the street. And he, I said, well, who's playing there? He said, Bus Movement's got the band. He says, bass is just going east. So when I, so when I went on down there, and so I was running to the cats, a bunch of the guys I knew. So I walked in there, they all hollered, hey, Mike, come on back. What, when did when, you get in town? See, I just got here. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm just changing buses. He said, no, man, come on up here. I said, listen, man, you don't want, where you going? Where are you changing buses to? I said, I'm going to Omaha. He said, no, man, you stay here in Kansas City. This is where it's at. There's a lot of gigs in Kansas City. See, Kansas, in Kansas City, I hadn't seen nothing like this, see. See, Kansas was working like, Go to work at 8 o'clock, get off at 5 in the morning. 8 o'clock at night, some go to work at 9 o'clock and get off at 4. Bass name was going to work at 9, getting off about 3, I think. And there was some bands going to work at 6 to 6 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 6 to 6, you know. 12 hours. That's, uh, dang. See, you didn't find it in them little towns down the southern part of Kansas City. Because, uh, you know what I mean. It would be too disruptive, I guess, you know. But anyway, I got my gig, and I, and I, and I got a gig with old Elmer Hopkins. And that was at the Monroe Inn. That was the first gig I got in Kansas City. 